and welcome to the Mobile Learning Toolkit for Teacher Educators and Teachers. My name is Kevin Burton and I'm the coordinator for the Mobilising and Transforming Teacher Educators Pedagogies Project. This is an Erasmus Plus project that was funded by the European Commission in 2014. And the project team includes universities from five countries, that includes the UK, Norway, Germany and Australia, along with three school partners located in Norway, Germany and the Netherlands. All of us are involved in one way or another in preparing new teachers for the classroom or assisting existing teachers to teach more effectively. And this project came about because we recognise that while schools and colleges are starting to use mobile devices, like the iPad and mobile phones, there is little or no support for teacher educators in schools of education to use these tools. This means newly qualified teachers, the next generation of teachers if you like, are not prepared to teach with these tools when they start their professional careers. So by targeting teacher educators and the university institutions they work within, we believe the Mobilising and Transforming Teacher Educators project has the potential to impact on new teachers, schools and ultimately students, far beyond the original project team. So what is mobile learning and what is the mobile learning toolkit and, more importantly, why would you be interested in using it? Let's start by looking at the individual elements that make up the toolkit before we consider how you might use it in your own practice. The toolkit consists of five separate elements that are shown in this diagram. And for the purposes of this tutorial, we're examining each of these elements separately. But we should stress that the toolkit is designed to be used in its totality. And to make this more convenient and easy to use, we've located the entire toolkit, which is free from you for users anywhere in the world, on a website. And I'll provide you with the address in a moment. So these are the separate parts of the website and the toolkit that it illustrates. First of all, a framework, a pedagogical framework. Secondly, a set of survey tools that can be used to evaluate both your own and your students' use of mobile technologies. Thirdly, some exemplar video case studies showing how other teacher educators have used mobile technologies. And finally, a number of other resources, including a set of iBooks and a rubric for evaluating apps. The fifth element, shown here, is an online course. This online course is free and this will be available and run over a six week period. Additionally, any university or school can adapt and adopt the course for their own context. And this is the website where you'll find the toolkit. So let's have a look at the individual elements of the toolkit. The toolkit came about as a result of collaborations between academics at the University of Hull and the University of Technology in Sydney. And in 2012, we produced this paper, which examined how teachers and teacher educators were using mobile technologies to support the learning of their teachers. As a result of that, we developed the IPAC framework, which you can see here. And this framework is grounded in what we call a socio-cultural approach to learning, since we believe that learning is something individuals construct in collaboration with each other and with the mediation of cultural tools, such as a mobile device. The second element we're looking at here is the survey tool. And this allows both teachers and students to survey their current use of mobile devices. So if you're involved in teacher education, you may find this a useful starting point for locating what you're currently doing and also how the students believe your use of mobile devices matches up to the framework. These are the two survey tools, one for teacher and one for students. Now the third element is what we call the matrix and this is associated with a series of video case studies which we've produced and here you can see how these case studies are located within the toolkit. So for example, you if you've completed the survey 
the feedback from the survey might direct you to look at one of these particular scenarios. And if it happened to be uh, in the area of authenticity, you might select the history scenario, which we can see here. You would then be able to view this scenario, as we'll see in a moment. So there is the history scenario, and by clicking on that, we're taken to this page, which gives you more details about that scenario, including the elements of the framework that it matches, there on the right-hand side, and illustrating here the elements of the framework that it matches to. And then, of course, the video scenario itself. To directly compare something like a map straight in front of you and be able to interact with it whilst you're at the site is actually really handy to be able to get like points of view and to be able to position yourself in terms of actual warfare. Research. The fourth element of the toolkit consists of additional resources which we've produced to help you understand mobile learning better and to help your students to use it more effectively when they go into schools to teach. The first of these is a series of interactive multi-touch books that some people called iBooks. The, par the partners in the project have authored all three of these books and each relates to a different aspect of mobile learning. So for example, the first one illustrates how students can make their own books. The second one identifies what's really interactive about using these interactive multi-touch books. And the third one looks more generally at case studies of educators who have used books and mobile devices in their practice. We also intend to produce a rubric to help teacher educators and trainees to select apps that have been identified as having real pedagogical value. Now this in fact is not our own rubric, this is just an example I'm illustrating. The final rubric will consist of a database and that will allow teacher educators and teachers to search using filters particular aspects of what they're looking for. So for example, you might decide you want to engage students in more collaborative learning and you're teaching um, students in history. You'd be able to filter examples and find apps that have been identified by practitioners as being particularly suitable at, for matching these particular criteria. So, how might you use the toolkit? And as we've already explained, our ultimate purpose in this project is to develop a network of individuals and institutions who are interested in using mobile technologies in teacher education. The toolkit will support you in this aspiration, and we would therefore encourage you to think about how you might adopt and adapt it at an institutional level. However, to begin with, you probably just want to test it out, and that's great. So we'd recommend you start like this. Step one, find some time to make yourself familiar with the IPAC framework, since this is really fundamental to everything we've designed in the toolkit. In the website, you'll find a dedicated section about the IPAC framework, and we'd strongly recommend that you take some time to read about it, watch the various video tutorials, which explains its parts, and subparts. Step two. Once you're more familiar with the IPAC framework, you should start thinking about completing one or both of the survey tools to give you a clear idea of how you're currently using mobile devices in your teaching. If you decide to ask your students to complete their version of a survey, you will also gain a more triangulated view of how you're currently using mobile technologies. So we'd encourage you to do that. At the end of the survey, you'll be able to see your own results like these, and those are the students if you've asked them to complete it. This will highlight your strengths and weaknesses, and based on the activity you focused upon, it will give you customized feedback upon which to act. So this takes us to step three. Step three, collect more information. You'll now have more reliable information upon which to develop and build your skills and understanding in the use of mobile technologies. This gives you a number of possible choices. You might decide, for example, that you want to strengthen one of the areas where your scores were lower. You could start this process by searching the matrix for video case studies that are located in the area where you want to develop. 
Watch the video case studies and think about their relevance to your own context. Alternatively, you might decide to read about what other teacher educators are doing, in which case the interactive multi-touch books might be a good starting point for this exploration. You might also want to focus on exploring some apps that can be used, in particular pedagogical ways. So we'd encourage you to look at the app rubric and the database that's been uh, associated with it. Finally, step four, consider institutional adoption. By this point, you should have a much stronger understanding of your own strengths and weaknesses in using mobile devices in teaching and learning, and some ideas about how you might go about improving them. This might be enough for you at this point in time, but we hope you might also consider the online course. This will help you to further develop your understanding and awareness of how mobile devices can be used in teacher education and will also provide you with valuable skills and networking opportunities to meet other educators working in a similar context. Ultimately, we hope you and your institution will consider adopting and using the course in your own institution. This could be with your own colleagues or with your training students who would benefit from this experience alongside your current training provision. The course can be customised to fit in with your particular context and we will continue to support and monitor the use of the course by institutions after the project is finished. So, that's about it for now. We hope you'll find the Mobile Learning Toolkit to be a useful and practical resource that you can use immediately yourself or with your trainee students. We'd be delighted to receive your thoughts and feedback about the toolkit, and you'll find plenty of opportunities to do this in the toolkit itself. So, good luck and keep in touch. We'd love to hear back from you.